Hey guys, what's going on? This is Bart coming to you from TST Industries in Florida. A new episode of TST Garage. Today we have Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R years 2013 to 2018, also known as 636. And we're gonna be installing our total protection pack on this particular bike. What you see behind me here is a bike that already has all the components from the total protection pack already installed on it. In this video, we will show you how we got there. For our total protection packs, we typically choose the frame sliders as the cornerstone part. Then we add fork sliders, and then we have our bar ends, and then swing arm spools. So let's go through them real quick. We have the Womit Tech frame sliders here. This particular bike has a setup from Womit Tech that has an intermediate bracket that fits around the frame component and then also screws into the frame and cylinder block and then an additional screw into the frame here. I believe that this is a very robust way of taking impact and, and forces from a crash and distributing them among many different surfaces and components. I've crash tested these things at excess of 130 miles an hour in the past. I know they work. They are made of Delrin material along with some 6061 aluminum components that have been anodized black. Um, the bolts on this particular setup are 12.9 class steel, very strong stuff. And uh, besides that, they do have a cosmetic cap system that is interchangeable for this particular bike. We use the silver, it comes with black. So it's really nice and very effective. Moving on to our fork area. In case of a fall, you know, no two falls are the same, but I've seen damage sustained to the rotor, lip of the wheel, bottom of the fork, sometimes even calipers. Now this Delrin component sticks out just enough to catch the first point of impact and have a surface for sliding and it just abrades away instead of catching bar ends. They are made of aluminum and then they have a sliding Delrin component. Again, the first impact will be absorbed slightly by the Delrin component because it does have a little bit of give and then the bike can actually slide on this should it be sliding in a configuration where the bar end is contacting. In the aft section here on the swing arm, we do have our aluminum Womatech swing arm spools. They're basically meant for paddock stand lifting. They make a really nice contact point for fork type paddock stands and also protrude just enough with soft aluminum material to take the first impact and create a sliding surface in case you go for a little low side. We do have these in several different colors and we also have them available in a Delrin material that sticks out just a little bit more. So if you feel safer having a consumable soft plastic material here, then you would probably go for those. The installation on those parts is really, really simple. I'll walk you guys through all the little nuances, give you all the tips that I know and make you successful at installing these parts yourself. I think that's about it for the yapping portion. Let's grab some tools, start yanking some parts off. All right. Let's dive right into our frame slider install. The most important thing for the success of this installation is to select and configure the correct parts into these sub assemblies and then subsequently get them on the bike. Now, these kits do come fully disassembled. All these parts are separate and you have to build it into these modules. What you see here is what it's gonna look like on the bike. We don't fully build it just yet. I'm just going to show you what they're supposed to look like when they're on the bike and then we're, we're going to disassemble them, identify the parts, make sure that you guys are successful in this assembly. They have similar parts on both sides. They just vary in geometry just a little bit and uh, there are different screws that make the assembly possible. As you can see here, this bracket has a boss sticking out whereas this has a counter bore. The one with the boss will go into the bike on the left side. The one with the counter bore will accept the engine mounting adjustment nut on the right side of the bike. Let's quickly talk about what these caps are here. This kit comes with this full complement of parts here with these caps that blind out 
the holes in the pucks here. You don't want to see this hardware. You want a nice refined look and these really make that possible. These are included standard in the kits. If you'd like, we do sell customized colors here. If you have a color that better matches your bike, we have silver, gold, red, blue, and white. The choice is really yours. Uh, we're gonna be going with a silver sticker in the uh, front axle slider on this bike. So I think what I'm gonna do for this scheme, I'm gonna pick silver. I think that'll complement this bike very nicely. We'll put those away and this will be our replacement here. And now I'm gonna talk about the part selection. I have the instruction sheet that comes with the kit. It does have a bill of materials. This is a pretty important thing to have accessible to you. I encourage you to look at this list as you make your assembly. It'll just make it a little bit easier for you to follow along with what I'm doing here. All right, let's start with the left side module. Let's identify those parts. I'm gonna take them all apart. I'll make it look like what comes out of the box when you receive it. All right. So the puck arrives shrink wrapped with this element in a little baggie already in it, no big deal. These are actually the same on both sides. So left and right puck and spacer will be the same. We'll grab one of those, one of those, actually we'll drop it through, make sure that the flange goes from the printed side in, and that's ready to go. Now for the spacer here, this is the spacer that fits into the puck, into the counterbore in the puck. This is the slightly longer one. On the opposite side, I'll show you in a second, it is the longer one. So the longer one goes on left side of the bike, shorter one on the right side. In the BOM, it is described as 25 millimeter spacer, and this is how you measure it in case you do wanna measure it to verify that's your measurement. Then you have two M10 screws. They are actually equal in length for this side of the bike, but the box does show up with a multitude of lengths. So let's make sure we select the appropriate one. This is gonna be the 50 millimeter long screw. Like I said, two of them, they are matching. And the 50 millimeter long screw is number two on the BOM, and there are two supplied, so here we go. Then you have another screw, which is much smaller. They are identical. Each side gets the same screw, so we won't worry about that. One goes to this side. All right. Let's get our parts ready for installation here. The spacer is inside. The spacer goes on the outside. One of the screws completes this subassembly, and this is ready to go on the bike. This will fit in this orientation on the bike, and this screw will go through here. This screw will go through here. Now that's ready to go on the bike, and we'll perform that installation in just a moment. Let's configure the opposite side. Like I said, the counter bore goes on the right side of the bike. If you're unsure, there is a laser etched number, part number here that corresponds to what's in BOM. You'll be able to correlate that with what's written in the instructions. On this side, once again, flange side towards the printed side of the puck, insert it in. We're gonna go with the shorter screw on this side for the puck assembly and the longer screw for installation on the bike. So the shorter one is M10 bolt, 40 millimeters long. And the longer one is an M10 bolt that is 70 millimeters long. So 
So once again, spacer, puck, puck spacer, shorter screw, ready to go on the bike, longer screw, small M6 screw through here, and we are ready to jump on the bike. We're gonna start here on the left side of the bike and then we'll switch to the other side and perform all the appropriate steps. So here on the bike, the first step will be to remove this cover plug using a small flathead screwdriver behind the fairing. I'm going to apply pressure underneath this head, try to give it force towards the outside and turn it. The whole inside is threaded. This plug has a Christmas tree plug type cap. If we, if we pull on it and spin it counterclockwise, it could potentially use the thread in the frame to, to get it unseated and get it out. Just afraid to pull on it too, too hard so that I don't lose a part of it in the frame. That's not what we wanna do. Patience here is the key. And then it comes out. All right, so this hole is threaded M6. That's for this little screw. Now we'll be removing this bolt I'm using a 14 millimeter socket for that. Now I am getting a pretty good amount of friction here, which means to me that the hole in the frame and the threaded hole in the cylinder block are not exactly concentric in this particular bike assembly. And that is pretty common on a lot of bikes, especially ones that have been in service for a while. Things shift around, flex, whatnot. And that's just reality. Now we just have to be very careful in how we reassemble our system so that we don't cross thread anything. All right. So like I mentioned before, the bracket with the boss sticking out goes on the left side of the frame and now you can see why. There is a counter bore here and this will fill that. So here you can also see that these wing shape features here will catch around the frame and give it extra sturdiness an extra area contact so that in the event of a crash, you have more surface area to spread the crash energy onto and run less risk of damaging components. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter Allen to get this thread started. And if this is too tough for you to turn by hand, then chances are that it's misaligned and you'll probably have to prop up the engine with a jack or something. Typically, if we do one side at a time, we don't have a really big problem. We get a little bit of friction, but that's about it. What I'm feeling here is the same amount of friction that I felt on the way out. So I'm not too, too concerned about it. I'm gonna get this almost seated. I do want a little bit of adjustability in there so that I could get my other small screw in here. Besides the fact that we have a 10 millimeter diameter bolt here and an extra surface area contact between all these components, we have another fastener here that increases the strength of the entire assembly between the frame, cylinder block, this bracket, and all the fasteners in it. Now you have a lot more structural rigidity All right, so this guy gets torqued down to 8.8 .8 foot-pounds of torque. And the main frame bolt will go to 32 foot-pounds. And finally, the slider set on this side. Let's engage the thread. And on this, we'll go to 29.5 foot-pounds of torque. Finally, I'm gonna grab one of those 
cosmetic caps, make the assembly look really nice. Line my logo parallel to the ground and push it in. And that's pretty much it. All right, as you can see, this is pretty much finalized. No modifications were necessary to the fairings around all these components. And um, with all the extra surface area and mounting bolts, now we have a very sturdy and structurally sound setup here. In case you do go down, now you have some proper protection on the left side of the bike. Let's do this to the right side and keep going with the other installations. Since we've already performed the installation on the left side and we've pre-configured our parts for this side of the motorcycle, this should be a snap. I'm gonna start again by removing this part. I have just enough room underneath the fairing. All right, let's now use a 14 millimeter socket to remove this engine bolt. And here is evidence of why you need a counter bore on this bracket. This adjustment setup for the frame to engine connection needs to be recessed into this surface here. And that is why we have that counter bore proceed the same as on the other side. All right, let's tighten these guys up. Once again, 8.8 .8 foot pounds for the small screw. 32 for the big bolt. Now I'm going to get our slider puck assembly. I'm going to use 29.5 foot pounds for that guy. Get our cap installed. And that's good to go. Let's move on to the next installation. All right, let's continue on with the fork slider installation. For this procedure, we will be using two six millimeter Allen keys. Let's grab the Delrin pucks from our kit and identify which side goes where. You have one puck with a large diameter boss, one with small diameter boss. The large diameter boss goes into the side of the axle that accepts the tool, whereas the smaller diameter boss goes into the part that accepts nothing. It just screws through this fork part. So knowing that, we will pre-configure our setup here, there is a rod. There is a rod that ties these components through, through the center. We have two identical size screws. What I like to do is pre-configure this one and then screw the opposite side onto this sub-assembly. Now for Ease of use in the future, I would say if you Loctite one side of this with at least medium or you know some uh, heavy duty Loctite, then one side will always stay connected and the other side will be the side that comes off for you. I've never had issues with this, but I've had guys report having difficulty in disassembly. So that is a trick I tell them about. That way you have a sub assembly here and a sub-assembly on this side and they come apart easily. All right, large diameter into this side, small diameter here, screw. And now we will tighten all this down. I do have a torque wrench and a torque spec for you. In the past, all I've done is basically just tighten these until I feel the screw threads preload now you're screwing the screw threads and the actual mechanical fastener against a Delrin component. Delrin is pretty elastic, so it does apply spring force to the connection and during riding vibrations, it won't loosen. But if you wanna be extra safe, you can go to 8.8 .8 foot pounds of torque. And that will complete your assembly. 
Now there's one additional part I want to talk about. These kits do come with cosmetic stickers. They're basically vinyl rings that are cut to fit inside these pucks. They come with red or silver. We're going for a silver theme on this bike. So I'm going to apply the silver sticker. I like to use a pick or possibly a small, really tiny flathead screwdriver to apply these guys. It's not really practical to do it by hand. That just gives it a nice little accent. You could always just leave it black too. But I like that little touch of class. All right, this is done. The fork and brakes and wheel lip are protected. Let's move on to the next component. All right, you guys, now we will be focusing on the bar ends. This is a very, very simple installation. Six millimeter Allen key. You'll undo this center bolt from inside here. That does thread in with red Loctite, red lock rather, into this component that then threads into the bar. If for some reason this is so stuck on you that you end up removing this entire piece, you will have to hold that with pliers and then disassemble just these two components, the bolt and the bar end off of this adapter, and then subsequently put the adapter back in. In case you need to put this back in, that's a 17, 17 millimeter socket. Same tool, align your new bar end. Make sure that the Delrin component is fully seated on the aluminum component. Get these threaded in. And for this connection, I also typically just preload the Delrin against the threads. But if you must, 8.8 .8 foot pounds will do the trick here. Now I'm gonna move on to the other side. It's the same exact procedure. So we're just gonna speed right through it. After we achieve full tightness here on this side, we just need to make sure that the throttle is not bound up. If it's not springing back on you easily like it is here, then you have to check all these components, make sure that this is free to move. You don't wanna be out there with cruise control trying to get into a corner, pressing your brakes, and at some point you notice that your throttle's stuck. You know, that's an unsafe situation. Make sure you check this part, very important. All right. That's pretty much it for these parts. Let's move on to the spools. Okay, now the spool installation is very easy and straightforward. You are delivered two spools and fasteners. They go in your spool bosses. The only thing here is whether you choose, uh, before you purchase, whether you choose the Delrin ones or the aluminum ones. Some people do like to have the extra material here. This is soft uh, impact absorbent material. Some people do feel like landing on this first will take some of the impact. I could go either way, but those are available for you on our website, tstindustries.com. If you do choose the aluminum ones, we do have them in several different colors. I'm just gonna choose black. I'm going pretty basic here. You can choose whatever you want. Six millimeter Allen key. Get this thread started. Get it bottomed out and then get it jammed down to 15 foot pounds. Good to go. Other side's vastly the same, so I'm not gonna bore you guys. Just get it done. All right, that's pretty much it for that one. And now we are done with the entire total protection pack. As you can see, we have added some sliding and crash impact components to the axle, frame and engine area, bars. And here we've chosen aluminum, but it'll also take the first impact and some of the rash from the slide in case you do go down. Now we've basically taken the impact areas away from the bike surfaces and moved them to these outboard, outboard areas that are made of Delrin and soft aluminum. This really does help in case you do go down I can attest to that. I've been down 
in excess of 130 miles an hour at a racetrack with some of these components on my R1 and it helped my R1 be rebuilt pretty quickly and get back to racing. I'm not gonna drone on about that. If you guys are interested in these components or perhaps the entire protection pack that has all of them together at a discount, tstindustries.com is the place you'll find them. Links are provided to you in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. See you next time. Ride safe.